So what was your next job after you? Now you have shelter. I had dollar fifty saved, and I went to a Salvation Army on Filmer and um, O'Farrell. I walked in, and I see an array of cosmetics. I purchased everything. They had blue eyeshadows. So I did my own makeup, first time. And I took a bus 38 down to Union Square, walked into Macy's, saw Lancome sign, and Lancome is really popular in Russia. And I saw um, a, a woman, and she looks like she's probably a, an executive. And I said, um, my name is Svetlana. I'm looking for a job. And she looked at me and she said, do you know how to sell? I go, no. Oh, I said, yes, I do. I sold, and I tell the story when I was a little girl and I sold herbs. She was, she was convinced, I think because she understood that I really need help. She was taking a risk. So she said, I cannot give you a full-time job, but how about 13 hours a week? And if you prove it, we'll keep you. If not, we'll let you go. So I started, I went through the training, I got the uniform, and I start selling more than the person who worked there 40 hours. My sales were just, the first year I became president circle. What do you think, what was it that made you such a great salesperson? I was very open to people. I would not only say, oh, this is $17. I would just, you know, oh, sit down, I'll put the mascara on you, I, I explain. And Lancome back then put so much money, million of dollars in training. You know, you know the ingredients, you know how it works. Uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty intense training. I also started mailing thank you notes and delivering products to uh, some of the clients that cannot come to the store. And I would take a bus and I would deliver the products. And for my kindness, they would order more. So I developed the golden Rolodex, and I knew every person who would come to visit me by their name. So I started having, you know, they, they, they would just feed me all the time because I knew that I was struggling. And one of the women, actually, Cynthia Shells, is still is my very close friend. This is absolutely a stranger. Cynthia walked into the store, and she couldn't afford to buy any of our products. She lives in a low-income housing, and I would give her samples. And she would be so generous. She would go across the street to Neiman Marcus and bring me a um, piece of chocolate because Joseph Schmidt uh, would have, you know, would uh, do public appearance, and he would give chocolates away. So she would run there, grab a few pieces, come back and bring it to me. And we're still friends. You know, I don't see her, um, but we talk on the phone. And we always sound like we know each other forever. And to me, it's important. It's important to keep in touch with these people. You know, you never forget kindness. And it's been, and Cynthia is so funny. She said, I've been watching you. It's been, you know, what, 18 years. And we're such dear friends. And she prays for me every day. And she's in my thoughts every day. What's really interesting about your story is your life is really based on the small acts of kindness of everybody in your life and how you have extended that kindness back to others. I mean, your life is built on the foundation of kindness and thank you. And I think that that's a really compelling part of your story. It's, it's the sharing. And, and the acts are small, but they're huge. They're powerful. They're life-changing. I think that that's really part. A couple of things I want to talk about, because there are really some great points I really want to make here. We were talking about Bruce Lee earlier. And I want you to share a little bit about how Bruce Lee has inspired you and why you found him. And then I want to talk about how you wrote this book, because I thought that was so smart, too. Uh, good questions. Um, my mentor, one of my mentors, uh, Grandmaster Jun Ri, wrote the book, Bruce Lee and I. Master Jun Ri is the founding father of American Taekwondo. He trained Bruce for 10 years, Muhammad Ali. Uh, and many, 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 um, many people. Um, one thing that I ask about Bruce Lee that was uh, significant to me, it's, um, let's see, 
Master Junri was very impressed that he constantly worked on perfecting his techniques. Bruce hand movement, there is a fabulous video on YouTube that you just must watch that when he talks about life being as a water, it's about the movement. And we, when you see his hands moving and the pace that he's talking so slowly, it's almost like a breath and the body, everything is aligned. His movements are just magnificent. He wasn't perfect, but he worked so hard, he focused. And one of the things that Master Junri taught me is have the ability to have this laser focus every day. And my entire apartment is taped this yellow sticky note, focus, focus, focus. Doesn't matter if you want to clean your desk or send notes, you just focus and you do one thing. You know, we've been mm -hmm. talking about multitasking. Right, right. I spent a few hours at Master Jinri's um, studio. He only does one thing. But productivity is much higher. He focuses. If he focuses on writing the letter, it's always, you, you know, you can tell sometimes I have a guilt of that. You know, I type and you have errors or it's only one line and thanks and bye. But Master Junri always takes time to write such a perfect and thoughtful letter. It doesn't have to be long, two, three sentences, but you just feel that this man was thinking and this is exactly the words he wanted to tell you that minute. He believes, Master Junri, that every person should have an affirmation. Like for example, today before I came to see you and to meet with you, I said to myself, I, Svetlana Kim, connect with my source all day long by saying thanks and showing grace. That puts me in a state of gratitude. Like you said, whenever happens little things would not upset you, and the same to me. When something happens to me, I immediately seize that thought, negative thought. I immediately stop it. And I sit down and think about that half of the world, three billion people live on a dollar a day. There is someone is dying at this moment because they don't have clean water or some little girl that is sold to prostitution. There's so many things that we have to be grateful for, despite our economy. Going back to affirmation, he said, I, Bruce Lee, will be the highest paid oriental superstar in the United States. Starting in 1970, I will achieve world fame, and from then onward, till the end of 1980, I will have in my possession 10 million dollars. Then I will live the way I please and achieve inner harmony and happiness.